Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. It's Friday, TGIF. I'm making this uh, video a little bit early because I'm getting my second COVID shot today and hopefully uh, it will go okay. But right now I'm out here enjoying a beautiful day. Look at this, you know what this is? A hyacinth. Can you smell this? Ah, oh, one of my favorite smells of all, the hyacinth. Anyway, let's get downstairs, see what we got today. You know, in my family, the hyacinth has always been a kind of a big deal, and every year around this time, just around Easter, we'd buy a couple plants, and, you know, you put them in the kitchen for a while, and, oh, you wake up in the morning, and the whole kitchen smells like hyacinth. It's just, uh, it's lovely. And it's something that brings back memories and fond memories of uh, of my childhood, and I carry on the tradition now. I just I love it, and this is uh it don't they don't last too long, but this is such a wonderful time of year. You know, spring, especially after a winter, and especially after this winter, when everything starts to bloom and bud, it's just a, it's a great time of year, and, the, and you can hear it in all the birds. They're all happy. It's a, it's going to be a good year. Anyway, uh, for today, I just wanted to kind of goof around down here, and there's a few things I got to bring all these. Uh, viewer gifts upstairs, but before I do I want to tackle a few projects quick and easy ones But things that I wanted to do as soon as I saw them. So let's get to it right away Okay, this first project I want to tackle today is from uh, from David Murray uh, This was in that box and you see what this is it is a tubing cutter, but what a beautiful simple little design Let's clean this up real quick Take a look at what it looks like. It's not bad. It's in beautiful shape, but we'll clean it up and I'll show you what it is and how it works. And we're calling this project done. Nothing but a nice little cleanup here. But look at the beauty of this tool here. First of all, it, it weighs, you could feel the quality in it. And you could see here that it says Truth and it says Mankato, Michigan. Okay, and uh, what this is, it's a, a tubing cutter. And how it works, you can see it's a genius design. It's got this uh, following nut here that pushes this. It's only three parts here, except uh, if you want to count the wheel as a fourth. But you would put your tubing in here like this into that little crevice there. Tighten this up and then uh, spin it around until the wheel will cut off the tubing. And when it does, uh, one of the problems with a tubing cutter like this is when it does cut the, the piece off of here, um, it does give a little bit, because the wheel pushes down, it creates an internal burr. That's one of the problems with this type of tubing cutter. But here they have this countersink here, this clean out on the back. You press it in here, you turn it like this, and that'll clean out the internal burr. Just a beautiful tool. Never seen one like it before, and really screams of quality, but it's uh, it's now retired. It's a beautiful tool, and it's going to be retired now. So let's see what else Hey, that got. was fun. Uh, nice little tubing cutter there. Next up, uh, you're always thinking about, I was, I was kind of reminiscing about my dad, you know, because I'm down here today just having fun doing what I feel like today. You know, it's one of those Fridays, one of those days that you just don't want to have any kind of uh, rigid structure. You just want to kind of do what you feel like. So uh, my father, sometimes when I would, you know, be fooling around as a kid, he'd go, well, stop fotsing around. Did you, <laughs> did you ever hear that expression? Fotsing around. I don't even know how it's spelt. Fotsing. And I have no idea. Has anybody else ever heard that expression? Was that something that my dad made up so he didn't have to so he didn't have to curse, because my dad never cursed. I think my dad cursed. I heard him curse four times in my entire life. And uh, and I'm, a, I'm not a big curser myself, you know. And, and so he, but I remember he used to say, quit fotsing around, you know. <laughs> Am I the only one? Maybe, I hope somebody else out there knows what that means and can help me out. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, next up, another gem from the David Murray uh, box. Um, it's a little dirty. I just want to clean this up and then we'll talk about it. So let me clean up first because I don't like to be describing something when it's dirty. Let's clean up. It's going to be a quick one. Okay, here we go. We're cleaned up now. Look how nice we did this, huh? This is brass under here, so I just took it down to the original brass. Um, polished out the lens, although it wasn't scratched up bad, but I used the Meguiar's Plastex. Definitely buy yourself this for one reason alone, just because the cool hologram label. It's worth the price alone. 
Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, so uh, a compression tester was years ago. This used to be used all the time, but today it's kind of, you know, fallen to the wayside. But my buddy 805 Road King probably still uses them. And what you use these for is there's a little rubber stopper here. And, and you take out the spark plug of your engine. You press this in here. You crank the engine. And this is like a one-way valve in here. So when you crank the engine, the needle will go up to whatever it is. Let's say it's 20, uh, 50 pounds. The PSI is on the outside. Let's say it's 50 pounds of pressure. And uh, and then you look at it, you read it, and then you hit this button. It goes, Psst, and then the needle drops back down. And then you can compare it to other cylinders. So if you have a multi-cylinder, like years ago when we had a car, you had eight cylinders. You would check each one. And if one of those cylinders, you can see here, a compression should not vary over 10 points between cylinders. So if you had one cylinder that was, you know, obviously low in compression, that meant you needed rings or you needed a valve adjustment or whatever in that, in that, uh, in that cylinder. So very interesting. This is, and the reason this is so nice, because it's snap on anything that's snap on is usually collectible, but it's also high quality, you know, and look at it's well made. But what it needs is a box. And I'm going to make a box for this. And uh, this should have a box too because the, the wheel can get mixed up. So anyway, those two are in the kit. Nice, now the huh? modern compression checkers usually have a hose that has a threaded coupler that will thread into the uh, spark plug uh, hole because the, the engines are so tight today. But years ago, you had so much room in the engine compartment that you could easily take out the spark plug and place that gauge right on top. You didn't need any kind of adapter, uh, but things have gotten a little different. So uh, this fits for modern engines, other than like uh, small engines like lawnmowers, snow blowers, things like that. For modern automobile engines, I don't think you could get that gauge anywhere near the spark plug. Uh, next up, let's try something different from uh, from Cynthia Berg. Let's check her uh, okay. box out. Cynthia Berg sent this in and uh, you know, I love my 77 padlock, so let's clean this up. You know what? It's funny. I've seen a few of these painted, and they always were painted in red. And I don't know why that is. It didn't come that way from the factory, but it's funny how people chose the same color to paint it. And, uh, and you know, these would look nice with a little bit of paint, especially in that master logo. Let's clean it up and, uh, and why brush it. Come back from there. And we're calling this project done. What a beautiful lock this is, huh? And look how nicely this came out, you know? And that's why I love when I find things that are painted because paint protects. So if ever you are on the fence about paint, painting a tool or something, go ahead and paint it. You can always remove the paint, but it, it protects it. Look at the steel on here. It's, it's like NOS. I mean, it's just beautiful. And let's take a look here what this is. You can see here it's the Master Lock out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, it came out absolutely, look at that. It's beautiful, right? And and look at that lion head on there. That is just with the mouth and the master insignia in the mouth. It'd be no, so nice to put red in there, wouldn't it? But you have to do that under a microscope or something to get it just right. But And red in those little lines over there. And, and let me show you how it works. First of all, we cleaned everything. Everything after we polished it, after it was finished... We put the uh, 50 50 drenched lock in it. And remember, yes, don't be stingy with the 50 50. Uh, afterwards, WD 40 to get out any residual 50 50. And then after that, and then you suck everything out with a vacuum and the spinning technique. And then we uh, tri flow. And look at how beautiful. Do you hear that? It's just, that is beautiful. And. These are nice little locks, and, and they, they run about about 10 bucks on eBay, and uh, you really should have one for your collection. It's just a really beautiful, and Cynthia, thank you so much. You know I love these, and this, this one's really okay, nice. Hey, uh, just came back from lunch upstairs, had a egg and cheese on a roll, pepper jack cheese. <laughs> Boy, was that good. 
So let's, uh, let you, what do you say we make a box for those uh, items we did today because we don't want them to get damaged? Let's, uh, let's do that. A little woodwork. Okay, this isn't going to be a fancy. This is just going to be a protection box. I got a piece of scrap wood out of the scrap pile and i also got a piece of uh, plexiglass scrap also that uh, these actually were on the bus they had them behind the bus drivers to have signs there and then they decided they were doing away with them they ripped them all off and threw them out but then uh i said these are good pieces to use and i took them out of the garbage and took them home so that's what that's found this is found so let's just quick cut out and make an easy simple box Okay, I've had a couple inquiries on how to cut plexiglass and uh, I found this way to be the most perfect way I use a carbide tip blade in my table saw as you can see here and uh, what I do is I raise up the blade to about half the thickness of the plexiglass okay so I raise up the blade here let me just get up here right about to it's about halfway up then I'll run it through flip it over run it through again and uh, that's how I do it. I score both sides and I never have a problem. Let me show you. Now, while that stain is drying, I uh, thought I would talk to you for a minute about, uh, about a, a video that I watched from a good friend of mine called uh, Big Vic's Workshop. And uh, Vic did a, a great uh, video just the other day. I'll have a link in the description. And, you know, it made me think a lot about, uh, again, growing up in the 70s. It was funny because everything was turned into junk. We were getting a big influx in the 70s of plastics and things like that. And 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 it, it bothered me because my grandmother was always one about, uh, you know, buying quality, you know. And there's an old expression that says, buy once, cry once. And that's because, you know, if you're going to do it right do it right the first time you know we buy junk and then you're buying it again and again and and there's such a beautiful feeling when you have something in quality that you actually look forward to using you know i guess we all have our favorite knife and fork that we use or cutlery or a kitchen utensil or uh you know so many things that we grew up with and and you miss like in my house i told you i have all glass doorknobs and and that I grew up with. And when I go to a, you know, like a Home Depot and I see these, these cheap imitation, you know, junky fixtures and everything, it's just, there's nothing, you know, that has lasting quality to it. And when you do find something that has lasting quality, you know, you, you scoff it up, you get it when you can. And one of the things that, that I want to talk about right now was uh, what Vic restored was uh his dad's dust pan now we use dust pans all the time right i mean I, especially in the shop or whatever and i've been using dust pans my whole life but it's funny how we look at them differently and that's what i want to talk about real quick now of all the tools we use around the home and the shop one of the most taken for granted is the simple dust pan and you know uh, we've had dust pans in my house since i was born obviously and the same ones and then you know through the years you pick up other ones here and there and and i just wanted to go over a couple things about these because you know when i look at a dust pan or when i touch a dust pan it invokes so much memories and kind of almost emotions for me that i just want to share it with you and and maybe i could rub off a little bit on on uh on to you some of the uh, the feelings and the appreciation for such a simple device now for me my journey begins here and this was my grandmother's dustpan this is the dustpan that i've used ever since i was a kid whenever we spilled something or made a mess or something my grandmother would say go get the dustpan and and i remember grabbing the dustpan it was usually hanging up in our pantry and when i grabbed the dustpan it always made this sound and you can hear it listen closely can you hear that it's almost like a gong like a bell but it would always tap onto something when you were lifting it and 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 even when you were putting it down and i say you know and as a kid I always thought to myself, I was like, you know, here's something I've had my whole life, you know, almost 60 years that I've been using the same thing. And I said, like, and it's never changed. It's never let me down. It's always been something you could rely on. 
And, you know, it was just a beautiful... And this one's made by Everlast, the company, and obviously not made anymore. And I think at one time it was green, but it was a stamped steel one. Years later, later, like I said, in about the 70s, the plastic explosion happened where they were making everything out of plastic. Anything they could possibly make out of plastic, they were making out of plastic. And dustpans were, were no exception. Although they did, they did make some metal dustpans, they, but they were more like a very thin sheet metal dustpan. And um, nothing like the uh, the gauge of the, my grandmother's, but, you know, the plastic ones, and they serve their purpose, but you know as well as I do, sooner or later, sometime you either accidentally step on one or something happens and you'll find cracked, you know, and once it's cracked, it's junk and you throw it away like all other plastic. This one here was uh, was made to be used with a bench brush, you know, and also a broom. But uh, and uh, this one here came actually part of a kit where the broom actually snaps into the handle. Now, years ago, my good friend Brian O'Hare gave me this beautiful dustpan. He picked up at a, uh, I guess he was at a garage sale or something, and he saw this, and he says, you know, it had my kind of, <laughs> he says it had your name on it, more or less. And uh, this looks like it was made probably in a shop class or something, made from uh, um sheet metal but it was done really well and the only thing that, that's rough on this is the handle isn't very comfortable because it's got the edge over here that when you grip uh and i always said i want to put maybe scales on here but it's a beautifully made heavy duty you know with that uh that sound uh sheet metal so i i always appreciated that and uh brian hooked me up with this and then later on in my quest for uh to find a, a dustpan that would be similar to my grandmother's, you know, I was looking around and it's very hard to find, you know, to, to find these. And some of these are expensive. In eBay, believe it or not, these things go for big money, you know, an original dustpan. But then I found Genuine Joe. Now, a while back, while searching for a, uh, a similar dustpan to my grandma's, I came across a Genuine Joe. And um, I, believe it or not, they're still available today. And I think they're cheaper now than what I bought it for. It's it's amazing what they sell. It's made in the USA. Can you see that? Made in the USA. It's of a uh, a beautiful. You can see it manufactured in the USA. S.P. Rich's company, Atlanta, Georgia. And I have to tell you something. Baked on enamel. Okay. Look at the handle here. The curved handle. So there's no sharp areas when you grip it. And listen to this. This is, are you ready for this? This is what makes it all worthwhile. Yep. And this is, I believe it's a white design, you know, with the W in here, like the one that Vic just restored, but uh, it is beautiful. It's It's got the, uh, it's just beautiful. And I really think that if you don't have a, uh, a dustpan, a decent one, go out Pick yourself up. I mean, for the price, it's unbelievable. Shipped. I can't believe they can do it. But, you know, I see other manuf other people buying these and reselling them at double the price, you know. And uh, and it, even at double the price, it's worth it. So pick this up while you still can. This is something that everybody should have, a good old-fashioned metal dustpan. Always enjoyed these. Now, one last thing about dustpans is usually with a dustpan, you can use a broom, but, you know, a lot of times in a shop, we use what's called a bench brush. And this is a, a bench brush here. There's four different types, and they all have different bristles for different things. And you can see here this this uh, Rubbermaid that came with that... Uh, that plastic dustpan. This one here is a, a stiffer brush. And this is very good for, you know, like this carpet here that I film on. This is good to get the, the you know, little things that fall onto the carpet. This stiff brush is good for that. And then there's a, uh, this one's not quite as stiff. This is good for sawdust and chips and things like that off of your, your bench. And then you have this one here. It's a softer brush. And this one here is good for, you know, brushing down your vice or something like that. Again, getting the dust and chips off of there. This is good for that. And then finally, this one here has been in my family for many years. Uh, this is original horse hair. Okay, now horse hair brushes are good for fine things that you don't want to leave any scratches or anything. It's almost like a dusting, but it also picks up fine material. So uh, there are a lot of bench brushes to choose from to go with your new Genuine Joe dustpan. 
So choose wisely. Okay, so here we have uh, today's projects all finished in the can. We have uh, Cynthia's beautiful uh, 77 lock with that beautiful lion head, you know, that that lion head in there. I just, I love that. I love anything with, with a stamping like that. So Cynthia, thanks so much for that. And then David sent in the, uh, these, the nice, uh, snap on compression gauge and also the tubing cutter. I put them in boxes. You can see I have a little plastic, there's a little plastic slide that goes on here. And the beauty about when you put a plastic slide in, you don't need any hinges or anything. Fits right over, keeps the dust out. Um, and it's just a simple box just thrown around. Just again, you know, a couple nails, a couple tacks. This one here is a, a little bit big for this. You could have made it a lot, you know, half the size, but uh, it's just will be stocked or put in a drawer and you don't have to worry about them. They're going to be retired. They put in a good, you know, years of service. So they'll be retired now. So in closing, special thanks to Cynthia Berg and David Murray for today's projects. Um, also, stop by uh, Vic, see Vic's uh, channel and stop by and say hello. Uh, check out his dustpan restoration. I have links to the uh, link in the description. And also I have a link in the description to that, uh, that dustpan if you want to pick one up. It's, uh, it's a great deal. And thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>